Okay, Kyle Barton here with K Barton Tools. Welcome to my bench. So, um, in this video, I'm going to go over how to calibrate the jig if it ever uh, goes out of calibration. You ever move uh, the threaded rod in or out, and you need to recalibrate it back to the way it was. It came when it was shipped. Um, so, first of all, um, as you know, um, when it when it's calibrated, uh, the 90 degree point is in line with the ends of these runners. So what I've come up with is this simple fixture that I use and this is the fixture I use when I'm building the jigs to calibrate them. And uh, basically it's just a piece of um, two by eight construction lumber that's been uh, jointed and, um, and squared. So um, it's four squared. And uh, I've added this fence here, um, you actually don't even need this fence, but um, it is helpful. So I just added a fence right here, and I've struck a line that's three inches from the end of this. This represents a center line of the jig, so it's uh, three inches from the edge of the board, and that corresponds to the center line here. Now, um, you can see I got a lot of vertical marks here, and I have little holes there. And um, this is just where I calibrate it to make sure that I can move the end of the runner up and place the drill bit in this little hole and it uh, will be uh, square. And that way I can, I can calibrate it. Now there's a bunch of holes because they wallow out over time and I have to put uh, new ones there. Uh, you probably won't have to do that. <laughs> but. First of all, let me go. There are some built-in calibrations already in the jig. So let me loosen up these uh, jam nuts. And let me loosen up this one too while we're at it. We'll need these loose when we do the calibration. All right, so these are loose. So if I... Um, move these back um, hopefully you'll be able to see right right here there's a little black mark here on the th on the threads and there's one on this side too and uh, when I calibrate these I go ahead and put these little black marks these black marks do not go all the way around they just go about halfway around so you know which end is up so to speak um, and then there's another one right here, hopefully you can see that, right here for the uh, rod end bearing. Now, so if you ever adjusted this, you can get it back reasonably close to calibration by making sure you can see this mark on this side of the tower and see this mark on the other side of the tower. Since these are threads, it's real hard to get right up next to it, but I get as close as I can. The same thing on the rod end bearing. So, if this was out, so let's just twist this around like this. Let's say for whatever reason, um, you extended this out and you needed to get back into uh, calibration. So, it's real easy to do. So, the first thing you wanna do is is uh, I didn't mess with this, so <laughs> but let's mess with this anyway. So let's say you uh, had that uh, screwed in or you had it on this side and you're now putting it back on this side. So you would just screw it till um, you see that mark there. Hopefully you can see that. And then I would just screw this back until I can see that mark on this side and the mark on this side. Now I'm reasonably certain at this point that um, that uh, this is in the rod itself is in the right position. So I'm just going to leave that like this, and I'll leave the rod end bearing like this. Have everything still loose because you may have to, uh, to to move it around. Now if the marks are gone, then um, you're just going to have to. Uh, move this in where you think it's about right and you'll see the, the the process that we go through here so i'm going to put the shaft in the rod end bearing put this back on my jig 
and then I'm going to put it in one of the holes, put the drill bit, the lead spur there into the hole. Then I'm going to move this back till the end runner is right parallel with uh, that line. So this should be the zero point. So this shaft here should be 90 degrees up and down. Now, um, to do that, I utilize, excuse me, let me grab this. I utilize one of these. Uh, you can do this with just using a square. That works fine too. Um, but I use uh, one of these uh, angle cubes, as this one's called. I just want to make sure it's zeroed out. This seems to be zeroed out. So I put it up here and see if it's zeroed out. And you can see it's zeroed out. So with that, I have everything in position the way it should be. So I can go ahead and take this off. Uh, go ahead and put your drill bit over here. And just want to snug these uh, these up. So snug them hand tight and then come in here with two wrenches and just snug that up. The same thing with this side, just snug that. Now excuse me, you're going to see my head move in front of the camera, but I kind of like to line that up. Doesn't matter a whole lot, but it looks nicer. And then snug that up. So once we have everything snugged up, we need to verify where we're at. Zeroed out, we're zero there, we're zero there, and we're zero there. So we're back into calibration. So that's how easy it is, is to do. Now, okay, so since the first example went so easily, um, Let's say we're definitely, we've lost our marks and we're trying to get this thing back into uh, calibration. So the first thing is the rod end bearing. Now here's the way I like to do it when I'm setting these up, is I actually screw the rod end bearing till it bottoms out and then I back it off two turns. So that's half a turn, one turn, one and a half, two turns. So that gives me, um, uh, some adjustment up here if I need it uh, as I'm calibrating this. So the next thing I do is I line this up to a mark here and then I get this rod end bearing and I make sure I can sight through it and then I look down vertically and I try to get this where it looks like um, right over the ends of the runners. So uh, a lot of this is visual, I'm sorry, but all I have to do is I know, looking at it, I need to back this way. And I can show you that easily enough. If I put this in and I put this on the mark, I zeroed out. You can see I'm off about 1.1 degree. So I need to go back this way uh, and to make up for that difference. So. Like I said, what I do is I look over it and then I'm going to uh, back this to where it looks like I'm over it. That looks pretty good right there. I may, be, I may still be off, but this in our hole, line that up, let's see where we are. We're uh, half a degree off now, so let me move this back some more, do a full turn. That's probably it. So let me move that in here. Let's 
So let me line this up. Okay, that's zeroed out. And we're zeroed out there. Pretty close. Now, I'm going to snug this up. This could cause this to change a little bit. And if it does, that's fine. Um, that's when we left room in here to adjust. So snug that up. So that's all snugged up. And I will snug this. I'll snug this up hand tight and make sure it's kind of centered there so it looks nice. And then let's make sure we're over our line. We're zeroed out. And we're at zero there. So let's make sure that's good. Yep. One more time, zero there, zero on top of the runner. And yeah, see, I thought there was something there. See, we're 0.15 degree off. So, um, like I said, that does happen. So I move that in. half a turn, get that tightened up again, that there, zero degrees there, and zero degrees there. So, yeah, it can be a little bit tedious if you lose your marks to get this thing back in there, but what, that took five minutes or so, so uh, not too bad. What you can also do is um, uh, use the same method to make sure that your setup block is in calibration. So what you can do is simply move the setup block to a uh, particular angle. So let's say we're gonna go 15 degrees. Now you're going to see my head here because these holes are a little wallowed out. And I think you've seen in other videos how this um, slants towards the hole. So um, I'm going to peek my head over here and uh, just make sure that that is there. I should probably be using my bifocals for this, but I don't see them anywhere handy. So we're just gonna go non-bifocal Kyle and see how he does. Okay, so um, I'm right there, sitting there at 15 degrees. Put this in here, zero that out, zero this out, and let's see. Sometimes you got to mark these back and forth just to make sure. So I'm 15.05 degrees. Like I said, the error on this is 0.1 degree. If I'm within 0 0.05 degrees, I consider that right on the mark. Now you can uh, go ahead and do this for other angles just to verify. But uh, with that, I think we're good. But like I said, if you did want to do it for other angles, you can just put this on here again move all the way to, let's say, 24 degrees. Make sure that line is going right in there. Move that there. 24.05, close enough for uh, chair making. Um, anyway, thanks again for watching the video. Once again, if you're interested in this jig, visit my Etsy store, K Barton Tools. And um, you can also uh, find me on Instagram at barton.kyle and all my profiles are linked to my Etsy store. So thanks again for watching.